Welcome to the new video on the Zeta function. In this video we will try to derive or better to go through the steps which Euler went through in showing that there are infinitely many primes. This proof is not the, the proof to go if you want to um, prove the infinity of primes that there are infinitely many primes you should not use this way but it's a very cool and short way to show that there are infinitely many primes. The standard proof for the infinitude of primes is not uh, the one that is shown here, it's the, the one that was used by Euclid because it's very very standard and very very elementary. You don't have a lot of um, high order stuff or really complicated stuff. Okay, So let's look how did Euler derive the infinitude of primes. He started off with the representation he found out himself. He for the gamma function, not the sorry, gamma function. I always mix uh, these both functions up. You will see later why, because they are pretty much related. And uh, what Euler found out is uh, for the zeta function is that this strange-looking sum could be rewritten as a product. Okay. I have a lot of uh, videos about that. I have all the proofs in my video, so if you want to see that, please have a look at them. Okay. Now, how, what did he do? Actually, he looked at a very specific value of the zeta function, the value for s equals 1. Okay. Now, if you look at that, what this will give you is all the reciprocal values, integer values, and the power is 1, so actually only taking the sum over all the reciprocal integer values. So it will give you 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 and so forth. So he looked at this and he first looked at the divergence and convergence of this series. Okay, You might ask yourself uh, what the heck is Mr. Yumov doing here? He's actually trying to show you the way and understanding this proof, okay? What he said was, I've written down this all, and you see here infinity is coming up. But let's have a look what is written down here. We have 1 plus 1 over 2. This is the sum that I told you. Now, what one can do is, he, the one, we take this one here, the one half here, and now I'm doing an estimation, okay? I'm doing a lower bound for the this sum. And actually, if you look at 1 over 3, okay, what you can say is that 1 over 3, which is actually 0.3 period, okay, so, uh, 0 0.33333 uh, until infinity, and you could say this value is 100% larger than 1 over 4, so the upcoming value. So you see these are decreasing the values of them. So what we are doing is we're saying that this has to be actually greater than 1 over 4. True statement, okay? Then we collect them together, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. You will see later on why we are doing this. Now, he looked at these. I don't know if, if this was Euler. I think this was known much before Euler. And that this is um, this result which we are going to derive first. Now, what we can do here is we look at 1 over 5, 1 over 6, 1 over 8, and as the values are decreasing, you can say, okay, this is at least greater than 1 over 8, 1 over 6 is greater than 1 over 8, 1 over 7 is greater than 1 over 8, the 1 over 8 we take this with us. Now you see what we are doing, we are taking now the next number would be 1 over 16, we take all the numbers until 1 over 16 and estimate them with 1 over 16. Okay, you would get 8 times 1 over 16 and the next number would be 32, you would get 16 32 numbers uh, 16 times 1 over 32 and now uh, you can do that for infinity okay now what we will get is so the one will I take this just with me now here I take 1 over uh, 1 plus um, 1 over 2 now this is actually it should be an equal sign because we are working on that and now we have 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 okay or written another way, 2 times 1 over 4, which will just give you 1 half. This is 4 times 1 over 8, which gives you, again, 1 half. 
Then we came with 8 times 1 over 16, again 1 half. Then 16 times 1 over 30, uh, 32, again 1 half. So what you see is you can always find uh, such a set of numbers in there that you collect 1 half, 1 half. And then if you take a sum and add all the time uh, 1 halves to that, what will happen is that you will end up at infinity someday. Okay? Now, what does this mean? We said that we took this sum. We couldn't calculate this really good. So we said this is at least greater than this sum. We found out that the lower bound of this is going to infinity. But imagine that. What does this mean for this sum? This means that this, so if you take all the integer values and take their reciprocal and add them up, you will have an infinitely large number. This is a little bit uh, strange because we are adding values that get uh, smaller and smaller, but we show that you can always find a small set of them, which is one half. Okay? And um, so this is the divergence. First of all, this is the first step. Now, what we can do next is we just look at this again. We found out that zeta of 1, okay, so if we plug in the s value of 1, we get an infinitely large value. Now, let's assume there are only finite, there's only a finite set of prime numbers, okay? Let's look at the right hand side here of the equation. What would happen is that you would have 1 over 1 minus the first prime uh, to the minus 1, okay? And so forth. So you would just multiply until the last prime number. But if you are taking a finite product, okay, what do you get? You get a finite number, okay? So, for s equals 1, we would have a finite product on the right-hand side, knowing that the left-hand side for s equals 1 is going to infinity. This tells us that our assumption that there were only a finite set of prime numbers is not true. Okay, this is written out. Finite set of primes would make the product converge. Okay, it would converge to a very specific value. Actually, you don't even talk about convergence here. It's just, it would take a very defined value. Okay, let's say it's 1 over something. Okay, now, if this would be the case, then the, the left-hand side should also take this finite value, but it doesn't. It takes infinite. So it has to diverge. Okay, that is the Euler proof that there are infinitely many prime numbers and in the upcoming videos we will also prove that the sum over all the primes so if I take 1 over 2 and add plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 7 and so forth if you would only take a part of the, this okay it would still get uh, become infinitely large okay well that what uh, are the um, conclusions of that we will discuss later on okay and that's it this is uh, concluding this lecture I hope you had a little bit of fun and uh, if you like my videos please subscribe and that's it see you guys